There is one Joe, a valuable member of the team, but who likes to be alone, who is sometimes decompressed and sometimes depressed. Who is it? Deep Six. Let's talk about him. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe because I do upload videos just like it every single week. All right, let's jump into the story. Deep Six was born in Baltimore, Maryland as Malcolm Willoughby. And since he was young, Malcolm has liked to be alone, preferring to be by himself than with other people. It's one of the reasons why he was attracted to the ocean and the solitude he gets under the sea. His V1 file card says he enjoys bottle cap collecting. Perhaps he likes pogs. He also likes solitaire and New York Times crossword puzzles. All things you can do by yourself. When Malcolm was old enough, Malcolm joined the United States Navy, rated there as a master diver. When the G.I. Joe team reached out to the Navy for a diver, they proposed 50 applicants. 38 didn't make it past this initial stage. During the dive testing that followed, eight more applicants washed out, and out of the four remaining, Malcolm won the position as he was able to hold his breath the longest. Malcolm's codename of Deep Six is old nautical terminology. It means to bury something, putting an end to it. Think six feet under, but the aquatic version. At sea, one fathom is equal to six feet, so six fathoms is 36 feet, a depth at which burials at sea were done during the turn of the century before that minimum depth was increased to at least 100 feet. So that's what the code name means that he earned once he joined the G.I. Joe team, and now officially a G.I. Joe, Deep Six debuted in Larry Hama's G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero comic book series with issue 25. In this issue, we heard about Deep Six before we saw him. The Joes were on their freighter, the USS Jane, the one they had before they got the USS flag, and they were somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico as the team maneuvered to take on Zartan of the Florida Everglades. Zap and Wild Bill were walking on the deck of the ship. Zap said to Wild Bill, Cutter seems alright, even for a Coast Guardsman, but that Deep Six character gives me the creeps. And Wild Bill replied, he's the best diver and deep water man the Navy has. You just got pre-mission jitters, he said to him. We later see Deep Six using a compass up on the bridge with Cutter. Cutter said he'd be launching in the shark after the two dragonflies took off and that he should go get the engines warmed up and looking overly forlorn despite his proclivity for and affinity of solitude, he said, evoking his best Eeyore, whatever you say, Cutter, and he walked away. I don't want to get bogged down in the granularity of the story, but I think that engagement really underscores who Deep Six is. His first run-in with Cobra was in the Everglades as he ran into Firefly. Firefly was bringing his cannons to bear on a helicopter when Deep buzzed him in the shark, messing up his shot. It then became Deep versus Firefly, Shark versus Water Moccasin. Deep dove in the shark, popped up on the other side of Firefly, and capsized the water moccasin, and then destroyed it with his twin 30mm cannons. And back at the freighter, once the shark was winched on board, Wild Bill complimented him for those maneuvers, saying it was some fancy shooting and flying, but Deep, looking as dejected as ever, just walked right past him, which made him angry. Airborne told him to calm down. He's in a world of his own, he told him. And Cutter agreed. Airborne's right. Depend on Deep Six to do the job. He's the best there is, but don't expect him to be friendly or even human. He popped up again a couple issues later, this time manning the right side turret in the whale. They made landfall on the hovercraft and Deep traversed his turret and fired the 105mm cannon at Destro's Rattler, hitting it broadside. But it didn't go down. Destro swung his plane around and strafed the whale, hitting Deep Six right in the shoulder. Although the Gow 8 nose cannon on an A-10 would make Swiss cheese out of a tank, I'm not sure how Deep Six was able to walk away from that with both arms, but hey, that's comics. Hell, not only was there no blood, but he was able to jump back on the turret, although Roadblock had to help him elevate it. Maybe Deep Six is a cyborg? It would explain his wet blanket personality, too. Imagine a T-1000 with orange hair. Anyway, after this, they treated Deep's wounds with field dressings. Roadblock gave him the credit for that shot, while others commented on their actually being surprised he was more than a cold fish. Cutter did say he's got a few redeeming qualities. The letters page in issue 28 made it clear that people weren't quite a fan of him, so he had to get some fancy heroics going to make people buy the action figures, I guess. Which one reader from West Virginia did in fact ask about. They strapped him to a skid on a Wild Bill's Dragonfly to transport him back to sick bay on the USS Jane. He had no M on his face, but he was out cold as they stretchered him to the medical team. He was pouting around in the mess hall a couple issues after that, trying to get out of decorating duty. Makes sense, I mean, who wants the depressed guy decorating for a party? So then, now healed, Deep was with Cutter and Doc once again on the USS Jane, but this time somewhere in the South Atlantic on stormy seas. As Deep Six steered the ship, Doc offered him hot chocolate. 
And he said, nope, never touch the stuff. But just after this, they were hit by a torpedo. Somehow one managed to get past the phalanx. Now on fire and taking in water and from a massive hole in the bow, Deep Six struggled to keep the vessel afloat and the missile hull leeward. Cutter was handing out orders and Tripwire said, that's a Raj, and Deep Six corrected him. You're supposed to say, aye aye, you bilge swilling lubbers. Two Cobra Rattlers angled in for a strafing run, so Deep grabbed a fire axe and started chopping the rope on a box, revealing an MMS missile launcher. He hit one Rattler with it, but it crashed right into the freighter, destroying the MMS system, and once again, Deep Six was severely wounded. By the time the whale returned, the Jane was sunk and they were in a life raft, and this led to the introduction of the USS Flag aircraft carrier. As the team set up their air base in the Gulf of Mexico, Deep Six is the one who launched the shark to track down a mysterious signal that was killing all the fish in the area. Deep found a bunker at the source of the signal and launched torpedoes and depth charges to try to destroy it, but it didn't work, and this led to the team nearly using a tactical nuke, but ended up using conventional weapons, which ruptured a fault line and gave way to the literal rise of Cobra Island. For the assault on Springfield, which was a ground operation and rescue mission to reclaim Ripcord, Deep Six joined Hawk's strike team along with LJ, BBQ, Flint, Shipwreck, Blowtorch, Bazooka, Alpine, Footloose, Heavy Metal, Crankcase, and Airtight, and they were tasked with taking and securing the airport, then capturing the main headquarters building. The highly classified, off-panel nature of his later missions with Larry Hama's first run on ARAH meant he was mostly off-panel after this. And even so, he remained active duty with the Joes until they were decommissioned and stood down in 1994 with issue 155. Before then, however, he did go on a couple of special missions. Their first special mission put Deep Six on a Swedish trawler somewhere in the Baltic disguised as a fisherman, but the October Guard in their Hind E attack helicopter figured out who he was as they compared his face to an image in a dossier binder. Rumors of a sunken U.S. submarine in the area had reached both the Soviets who deployed the October Guard and Cobra led by Baroness. Right after they flew away, Torpedo put Deep in the drink with a shark. It turns out that the shark was broadcasting a fake image of the sunken sub, and there was no salvage operation. The real mission was to get the harbor master out safely as he wanted to defect. We then saw him again briefly on the USS Flag in Special Missions Issue 28, which was the last of that series. Deep Six showed up again when Larry Hama once again picked up ARAH, this time now with IDW. With Issue 166, he returned on the hull of the whale right off the coast of Broca Beach as he untied a shark. He was with Shipwreck, Polly, Cutter, and, and Topside on an Observe and Report mission. They were conversing about the massive transport helicopter they saw land on shore and what that meant in terms of Cobra operations. They dropped the shark in the water for Deep Six to explore just as Destro and Baroness launched from a submarine pen located below Broca Beach Pier. Deep saw the sub, but the Baroness, who was managing the radar station on the submarine, Deep Six said they should drop a series of depth charges since they couldn't see the sub anymore which happened to be right on his position. A cobra stuck a limpet mine on the hull of his shark, so he ejected the canopy and then fought with the cobra underwater, even as a large knife was raised right to his helmet. The depth charge blew all around him, and Shipwreck fought a lamprey and was out. Afterwards, assessing the damage, Deep finally surfaced with a shark and an unconscious Shipwreck. As I was coming up, he said, Shipwreck was going down, so I thought I'd bring him along. He was then on the cover of issue 229, again in the shark, again off the coast of Broca Beach. Even though Broca Beach was destroyed, they were following up on the submarine pen discovery, looking for other anomalies. And that's when they ran into a squadron of eels. And he and Torpedo fought them underwater in a fight scene reminiscent of James Bond and Thunderball. Cutter and Deep Six then dove to explore the airlock where the eels had come out. And ever the wet blanket, Cutter said, the airlock controls are universal. Panic proof, Deep said. Then as they kitted up, Cutter said it might be better for him to use an SMG or a shotgun. And Deep said, if they have the same caliber weapon, then he can scrounge the ammo if Cutter gets killed. He then reminded Cutter to make sure he puts his rounds into bodies right into meat, otherwise ricochets might be an issue because everything around them was metal and steel. They found a Cobra Bat assembly factory that was using Revant Robotics tech. Deep Six opened the airlocks and flooded the facility, and that was the last time we've seen him as most of the recent operations have been in desert terrain, although I'm sure he's once again on off the books black ops around the globe. In IDW's Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow issue 20 by Chuck Dixon, the USS flag was dry docked. After an explosion, Deep Six's arm was pinned, and the ship was at risk of rolling, and there was tons of old, unstable ordnance all around them that would blow up and kill everybody. Cutter and Torpedo tried to free him with a blowtorch, 
but it didn't work. Snake Eyes had to cut off Deep Six's arm to free him and save him, even as Storm Shadow stabbed Cutter. They made it out just as the ship collapsed in the dry dock, a twisted heap of metal and one arm. For the Sunbow animated series, Deep Six was voiced by Hal Rail, and Hal was the voice of Raphael in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the voice or sound of Predator in Predator 2, and Shrapnel in Transformers. Deep Six was seen throughout Season 1 of the Sunbow animated series. He was in Season 2 as well, but much less so. His first animated appearance was an episode called Cobra Stops the World, where he and Torpedo dove to the base of the ocean on orders from Duke. Soon they found a Cobra base, and Deep Six and Torpedo were fighting Cobra eels, and one of them used a sonic weapon. Deep Six said he likes it quiet and hit the eel in the head, which managed to break the sonar gun in the process. He was in the shark again for Synthoid Conspiracy, Spell of the Siren, and Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent, along with Primordial Plot and Memories of Mara. In Ode de Cobra, Deep Six was in the shark yet again, but under the yacht of a shipping magnate named Socrates that Baroness had brainwashed with her love potion. Deep Six had to fight off Cobra eels while hiding under the magnate's vessel. Then a synthoid Deep Six attacked Shipwreck and there's no place like Springfield. In the Arise Serpentor Arise 5 part season 2 opener, Deep Six was one of the Joes guarding the tomb of Alexander the Great. Then in Last Hour to Doomsday, Hawk had him in wetsuit find and destroy something called the Vortex Cone. They ended up finding it by tracking Wild Weasel. Computer complications opened with Deep Six and Wetsuit on the tactical battle platform talking about antimatter. They ended up finding a submerged space probe and brought it to the USS Flag. Deep Six is the one who tells Admiral Ledger to use Sky Strikers to be able to hit the attacking Cobras. At the decommissioning ceremony for the USS Montana, with Deep Six in attendance, Cobra Bats and Destro and Amore attacked. Deep Six pulled Shipwreck out of the water and then later had to help get Hawk out of the water too. In Raise the Flag, Deep Six was with a low light and cross country when Hawk was talking to Admiral Ledger about getting the Joes on the radio. And then we later see him with the cushions as they attempted to, you know, raise the flag. Deep Six also had his own PSA, it's a sort of creepy one where he pops out from under a lake while the kids are swimming in order to tell them not to swim when there's lightning. And another one had him telling of the importance of wearing a life jacket. Deep Six's action figure debuted in 1984 as the driver for the shark. His articulation points were immediately a point of contention for collectors, you couldn't move a whole lot, but this was fixed when he got his next figure in 1989. In 92, Deep Six then joined the Eco Warriors and his pet Finback was introduced. Before Finback was a grey dolphin, the production model, he was a black killer whale. These are the prototype copies, although literally a handful of reports say just 24 actually made it out to stores. This deep water specialist changed color based on the temperature. The next year in the 1989 Deep Six was repainted and was sold as a mail away exclusive and the offer was the menace in the wilderness. The story on the mail away was about the G.I. Joe International team stopping Cobra and their wolf from interrupting telecom worldwide from the Montana wilderness. Nowhere near the ocean. So Cobra sent Ninja Vipers to stop them and the Joes responded in kind with Hawk and his jetpack and Deep Six. Apparently they also brought a hovercraft to bear on Cobra so I guess there's a frozen lake nearby that maybe Deep Six would have to dive on below the ice. Interesting choice either way. In 88 there was an Operation Deep Six mail away as well but guess who was not included. That's right. Deep Six had a few figures in 2008. One was a three pack for Toys R Us where he was carded along with Lieutenant Torpedo and Cutter. The next came with an update to the shark called Shark Tooth. Yet another in 2008 carded him with rock and roll in a comic book reprint of ARAH issue 25, his first appearance. The following year, Deep Six joined the Rise of Cobra line even though he was nowhere to be found in the film. Perhaps he was on set but just off on his own as he likes. As a combat diver, he came with an LW820 assault rifle like Shipwreck as well as a harpoon. And if he looks like Torp now, it's not your eyes, that's Torpedo's mold. And to summarize Deep Six, we again turn to his foul cards. His unsociable behavior can be annoying, just ask Wild Bill, but when Cobra is on your back and you need a hand, Deep Six is there to help you out. And with that, it's time to Deep Six this story. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.